can you feel the spookiness of Halloween? Welcome to Resident Evil 7, the game which scares even the most fearless, the game with one of the most unsettling and spooky themes you could imagine for a horror game. Don't worry my friend, in this video it's gonna become even spookier, because we're gonna be running Resident Evil 7 on something that has no business running Resident Evil 7. This is my Lenovo IdeaPad 115 IBY laptop with an Intel Celeron NG840, Intel HD graphics page rail and 4GB of RAM. I could have used the good old Windows 7 for the test, however I had a lot of stuttering problems and the game always crashes after the first chapter in Windows 7 for some reason. Hmm, maybe the game isn't very optimized for older versions of Windows, I don't know. And we will get to the crashing later on in the video. Instead, I'll be using Windows X Lite Optimum 10 Pro which is the debloated custom ISO of Windows 10. Now, because since 2022 Resident Evil 7 requires a GPU with DirectX 12 support, yet our Intel HD graphics page rail only have up to DirectX 11 support, you either gonna have to install the older DX11 beta branch version if you've purchased the game from Steam, or if you're a pirate who enjoys the freedom of not taking the consequences of not paying for games in your country, you need to find a version released before 2022. Also, before running the game, we're gonna use the wonderful memory with Duck 2 to free up some extra RAM for the game and I've configured the two to free up RAM every time the usage reaches 90%. As for settings, I'm using the lowest settings that the game would allow us to use, I even disabled the camera wobble and set the plot effects to less. Now, a few important things. I'm going to set the rendering mode to interlaced because it's faster than normal rendering mode. I'm also going to enable the shadow cache because it improves the performance. Unfortunately, we cannot disable the anti-aliasing by default, so we can either choose between FXAA, TAA, SMAA or FXAA plus TAA. My personal recommendation is to choose between FXAA or TAA, as SMAA is a little bit more demanding, but don't combine FXAA and TAA, okay? Finally, as for resolution, hmm, let's see. And so, we start a new game, preferably on easy mode. At first, it wasn't too bad, if you ignore the fact that even Super Mario 64 has way better graphics than this, until my character began turning off his car and getting out of it, when we went from 20 FPS to as low as 4 FPS. And in combination with these top tier visuals and the slow motion, I nearly ended up becoming motion sick or something like that. No joke, I was actually struggling to figure out where the heck was I supposed to go. But I wasn't going to give up that easily, and after a while, I did find a way to the house and the FPS became a lot better. Now, when you start playing the first videotape, this is where you will run into another issue. You see, when the FPS are below 15 in Resident Evil 7, the game runs in slow motion, however, the audio of the dialogue still runs in real time, which makes it rather weird and even a little bit annoying at times. Take a look for yourself. And this is how it's supposed to run. Where did you find this guy? Give me a break, Pete. Hey, I only work with professionals. Speaking of which, make sure the sound is right this time. I don't want a repeat of Amarillo. That was two years ago. I don't do ADR. Overall though, throughout most of the first chapter in the abandoned house, from getting the shit out of us jump scared to freeing Mia, spoiler alert, our wife, with the glitchy hair, who likes suddenly turning into a zombie, <laughs> to 
to getting your freaking hand cut off by the crazy wife and so on, the game was actually quite playable. Yes, there are drops below 15 FPS and even below 10 in a few instances, but then again, were you guys expecting a 2017 AAA title to even open on a little Celeron that makes a 2006 Courtier Duo look like a Ryzen 9? Once you reach the boss fight with Mia, however, this is where you run into yet another problem. Remember that I briefly said something about crashing in the beginning of the video? Well, after Mia comes with a chainsaw trying to kill you, if you decide to retreat to the corridor and close the door behind her, she will try to break the door with her chainsaw, and not only will Ethan die, but so will the entire game. So if you have the Intel HD graphics page rail or any of the other iGPUs on the screen, do not close the door behind Mia, otherwise she will crash the game with her magical chainsaw. Luckily, after doing a quick restart of the game, this time I was able to put Mia to sleep. So yeah, the first chapter is actually playable, surely the rest of the game is also as playable. Well too bad, because once you reach the part in which you are in the baker's house, well, you're gonna have a hard time getting even 10 FPS. Also, just look at how broken the cutscenes are. Here's the dinner cutscene. Hit boy's got to eat. He got to have his supper. Come here, boy. Let's do it. Here's the first encounter with the deputy. Hey, you gotta help me. Hold on, back up. Now, sir, do you live here? I mean, is this your property? What? Me? No. No. All right. Now, we got several calls about some missing persons lately. You don't understand. I gotta get out of here. I calm down. You're not listening to me. There are crazy people in this house trying to fucking kill me. But by far the most hilarious was the garage cut scene. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Now first you need to tell me what you're doing out here alone in the middle of the night. Me? What about you? No, it's my job. Why don't you do your job and tell me? Answer my questions. You're not gonna believe me if I told you. Try me. Speaking of the garage cutscene, when you reach this point of the game, do not let Jack drive the car at any cost. Trust me, because the game crashes if you let him drive it. Just grab those keys and start the car as fast as possible and don't bother trying to kill Jack.
After that, you unlock the entrance to the main hall of the baker's house and you're supposed to grab three head statues in order to unlock this door to get out of the house. The only problem that I had until you have to go find the third head, aside from the horrible FPS and the slow motion of course, is actually related to the second videotape with Mia hiding from Margaret. If you, for some reason, decide to go back to the main menu during the videotape and then reload the save and finish the tape, the game will crash afterwards and you will have to either load an old save or start a new game all over again. Okay, now for the final head. Oh wow, we're getting good FPS once again. Okay, maybe not really, but um, that's about it. Because if you try to progress past this point, the game crashes once again. This time, there's nothing you can do to bypass it. It doesn't matter if you decide to go to the room behind the blue gate or the other room on the left, the game will always crash. I've tried it multiple times, but to no avail. So unfortunately, on this laptop, it's impossible to progress any further past this point. Yeah, I've also seen some people claiming that the game also crashes on other integrated graphics based on the same architecture as the Intel HD Bay Trail in this video, which includes the Intel HD 4000, 2500 and Ivy Bridge. I guess the architecture itself is way too outdated for the game's engine, it's an architecture from 5 years before the game came out, so no wonder there are so many performance and crashing issues. It's a bit of a shame really, cause this is a beautifully optimized game. I've seen somebody from Latin America playing Resident Evil 7 on a government laptop which has a Celeron N3150, which is actually a quad core Celeron and is one generation ahead of my Celeron, but um, you know, it's still a crappy Celeron nonetheless, and well, Resident Evil 7 ran way better on his government laptop than it did on the laptop in this video. He was also using Windows 7, yet was able to make it to the baker's house, something that I couldn't do on my Celeron laptop in Windows 7 because the display driver always stops responding and recovering once you finish the first chapter. He also had no slow motion issues whatsoever despite using a higher resolution. I mean, it's just crazy. Honestly, I don't think the Celeron N2840 itself lacks the raw power to run the game with low enough settings. I think it's the outdated architecture of its integrated graphics that is causing the performance and crashing issues here. So is this the end? Well, no, because we've still got to check out the DLCs. So, in terms of the band footage DLCs, Nightmare crashes after loading, Bedroom actually works, 21 immediately crashes during loading, and Daughters, well, also crashes. The Not A Hero DLC also works, so that's very nice. The same cannot be said for End of Zoe, however, since it doesn't work. Jack's 55th birthday works, yay, it runs. And Ethan Must Die also runs. Oh wait, never mind. There's also the demo from Steam, which also runs with no issues aside from the intro and ending videos being laggy. I also tried disabling the anti-aliasing and whatever that means, but it still ran exactly the same as before and the crashing was still there. One thing that I guess helps a little bit is lowering the resolution to 320 by 200 thus making Resident Evil 7 look worse than a Game Boy game. Finally, because somebody will eventually ask about it in the comment section, what about lossless scaling? Well, the only way I could get anything remotely stable is with the resolution lowered to 320 by 200 and the FPS locked to 10, that's right 10, with River Tuner and LSFG 1.1 plus the integral scaling type as it's way more lightweight than FSR scaling unlike what most people think. Still, look at this guys, this is true frame generation with lossless scaling on the Celeron N2840 and Intel HD Bay Trail in a game that totally runs at 60fps with no crashing and such, it's beautiful. In conclusion, 
I think I would call this a partial success. Well, yes, it wasn't too bad during the first chapter, aside from the very beginning outside. Once you reach the baker's house, however, well, let's just say it's a little bit of a disaster. Still, if you, for some reason, only have these specs or similar to play PC games in 2024, a good chunk of the main game can be played with no crashing if you do everything correctly and a few of the DLCs also run so there's that. All in all, you could say it's playable to an extent, but if you have a newer Celeron or Intel HD graphics based on a later architecture than Ivy Bridge, then go ahead and buy and download Resident Evil 7 because it's gonna be a very nice horror experience, especially in those super low settings that you will have to use, with no crashing and slow motion I think. And I don't know what else to say, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this ultimate horror experience in Resident Evil 7 on my potato, if you want to see more of my horror experiences with my potato PC, you can check out any of the videos in the playlists on the screen, happy Halloween even if it isn't a holiday in my country and I wish you all the best.